call the Human Affairs Committee to order on Monday, September 14th, 2020. The time is 7.03 p.m. And we are meeting via teleconference. As chairwoman of the Human Affairs Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and lis listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are utilizing Zoom and the meeting link can be found on the agenda as well as in the city's website. You can join by telephone by dialing 1-929-205-6099 and the meeting ID is 812-3274-6694 and the password is 776051. The public may also view this meeting on Comcast channel 16. I could ask everyone on the call to please mute. I'm getting some feedback. Uh, we previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public posting. Instructions have been provided on the City of Nashua's website at nashuanh.gov and publicly noticed at City Hall and Nash Nashua Public Library. If anybody has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there's anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Alderman Wilshire. Thank you. Alderman Kelly. I am here, I am alone. And I can hear everyone. Alderman Harriet Gethright. I am present, I am in this room alone and I can hear everyone. Alderman Clay. I am present, I can hear everyone and um, I guess that's it. <laughs> Alderman Karen. Yes, I am here. I'm alone and I can hear everyone. And Alderman Wilshire is here. I am alone and I can hear everyone. We do have a quorum. Great. And also in attendance, I see Director Marchand, um, Mesquina, anyone else? Oh, Dr. Uh, Director Bagley. I'm looking. It's like Hollywood Squares. Did I miss anybody? <laughs> okay. We will. Um, open up to public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to make a comment this evening? I don't see anybody. Okay. Uh, we're going to start tonight uh, with a presentation. Um, it's a housing update from um, Director Marchand and Ms. Kina. Good evening. Thank you. Um, I am going to share my screen, but first, um, yeah. Carrie Skeena, the Urban Programs Manager, is here with me tonight. Um, and so we'll each be kind of tag teaming this. And if you have any questions, please feel free to just ask. It is a short survey and it is in your packet. Um, so, and anybody who's watching from home should be able to find it at part of the packet online. And, oh Lord, where'd it go? There it is. Can everybody see? Okay, I hope that's a yes. So um, here's our housing update tonight. This is gonna be an overview of kind of the data about where we are housing wise. And then um, Carrie's going to give an overview of the programs available through the Urban Programs Department and what our next steps are. So currently you can see three charts. Um, in the upper left-hand corner is the Nashua rental vacancy rate. Uh, the two lines, the red shows a vacancy rate for all units. The green line shows a vacancy rate for two bedroom units. While this line does look 
somewhat volatile, I would encourage you to look to the left-hand side and the percent of the vacancy, the actual vacancy rate. A healthy vacancy rate is 5%. And from 2010 to 2019, what this is showing, we have made it to half of what is healthy only once. Um, and at this point in time, are well below 1% vacancy rate, which is a unprecedented situation. Um, that means you can't really even get paint on the walls and the unit is turned over. There's essentially no housing available on the market at any point in time. The chart below that shows the rental distribution by the number of bedrooms. Um, the green line shows zero bedroom studio units. Red lines show one bedroom. Blue lines show two bedroom. And purple lines show the three bedroom units and their cost spread. I think one of the most telling factors here is that there's almost, there are very, very, very few units for $1,000 or less in the city. And the vast majority of units are significantly higher. Um, and so that absolutely affects not only the price of the unit, but the availability of the different types of units. The third um, map and graph, which is on the right-hand side, Shows, the down, shows downtown Nashua census tracts. And we're trying to look at the difference between the median monthly rent in that census tract versus the median monthly income. Um, these census tracts are some of our most diverse. They're also some of our poorest census tracts. Um, and they, have, they are also some of our most dense. So there's more housing and people living in these areas than in many other parts of the city. If you look at the different um, tracks, um, just for a reference point, because I don't know if a lot of people are used to looking at Nashua this way, on the far right-hand side is the Merrimack River. On the left-hand side is Route 3, and kind of cutting through the middle is the Nashua River. So Track 107 shows um, is centered along Main Street, kind of bisects that in half with um, East and West Hollis Street dividing it in half. And what you can see is that the, if we look at tract 104 in the table above, that the median monthly rent in this census tract is $1,250, but 30% of median income for renters is closer to 950. So that's almost a $300 a month difference in what the average rent is versus what people can truly afford. And that disparity is shown pretty across the board for all the census trucks in our downtown. Um, the 30% of monthly income is a federal standard that's used to say that is a safe place to be spending um, your income. And above that is, is a significant, becomes a significant financial hardship for a family. This slide shows cost burden households. So it talks, this slide is specifically showing how many households or the what percentage of households that are renter occupied and owner occupied are spending more than 30% of their income either on rent or on owner costs. So on the left hand side is renter occupied, on the right hand side is owner occupied. And these are pretty stark. Um, the dark blue from the light green to the dark blue shows is it is a higher percentage that is spending more than 30% of their income on housing. The darkest blue is shown in more than half of the census tracts in Nashua, where greater than 50% of the people in that tract are spending more than 30% of their income on housing every month. Citywide, the average is around 45.6%. It's also somewhat stark on the renter, on the, excuse me, on the owner occupied side. Um, the fact that we have census tracts with more than 40% or more than 35% of, more than 30% of owner-occupied households spending more than 30% of their income to sustain their owner-occupied housing is also pretty concerning. You can see the areas of overlap between both of these, again, concentrating in our downtown, but also in different sections of the city, depending on the, where they are, if it's renter or owner-occupied. Switching a little bit further over into the owner occupied side, this is just some data for um, if you were to try and buy property in the area right now. 
So the chart on the upper right-hand corner shows residential property sales over the past almost a decade. Um, and what you can see is the green line shows median price, which has certainly been growing steadily. Uh, the red line shows the annual number of units sold. And the purple line says the average number of monthly listings. I think what's significant here is the very strong trend in the green line um, since 2012 in an upwards trajectory. It's gone up $100,000 from the average selling price being $213,000 to over $315,000 as of the end of last year. And that trend is certainly continuing in 2020, despite the pandemic. Um, but also the purple line with its um, decreasing value, which is even more so now. With so few units on the market, that is one of the things that's pushing up the price of units um, over time. And so there aren't houses available for purchase. And if they are available for purchase, they are significantly more expensive than they used to be. In addition, there are, um, if you look at the chart on the bottom side, um, it shows the difference in median income versus purchase price over the same period. So the green line in the bottom right-hand side is median monthly income of the owners. And you'll see that that has remained pretty steady over the past decade, whereas both the price of a single family home and a condominium have risen pretty sharply. So again, that shows a more of an affordability gap. And as we are all experiencing this pandemic and living here, um, and we have been um, working through this pandemic and so many people without work, um, there has been some relief programs that are specific to New Hampshire and our area that have come out from the CARES Act for people who are having trouble paying their rent or their mortgage. Um, the CARES Act funding from Governor Sununu and the Gopher Committee has initially funded $35 million to help rent stabilization and housing support. Out of the 35 million, there's 20 million initially available spread out across the state um, with Southern New Hampshire Services being our cap agency here. And so this money is available through the local cap agency. On the bottom is the website, pretty simple, www.capnh.org. Um, and it is, it is a it's a relatively easy process to apply for this funding. Um, it is specifically to help household costs that fell behind on rent or owner costs um, since April 2020 through now. There is a maximum per household of $250, sorry, $2,500 per household. Um, so that is a, that is a capped amount. Um, that's the most any household can get at this point in time. Um, and the funds are paid directly to the landlord. And with that, once if you're admitted into the program, they will pay back rent, they will pay your rent to help get you whole, and they will assign a regional case manager so that um, families or individuals who are need to take advantage of these services can also be um, put in touch with anyone who, else who needs um, any other resources and services that are out there to help them through this time. I say Bob Mack, the welfare officer, is an expert in this. He is an excellent resource. Um, and he has been working very diligently with all the many other organizations in our community that help support housing. So these, um, there's an amazing network of um, community groups that really support housing. And um, I think there's, there's quite a few people you can reach out to here in Nashua. With that, I'm gonna pass it over to Carrie about some of our city-sponsored programs. Hi everyone, this is Carrie Skeena, the manager of the Urban Programs Department, um, which was, is within community development. Um, so this slide is quite busy, but um, I put it in more as something that people could go back and reference, um, not necessarily to take it all in uh, live, but basically out of Urban Programs, we have, um, kind of three pillar programs. We've had an owner occupied rehab program for many, many years. It's a very traditional program that communities do with their community development block grant. And that is geared toward low income property owners who live in homes that are one to four units. 
and we can cover those rental units as part of the, the house. It's a 0% interest loan. The loans are deferred. We often do subordinate to them. If somebody's going to refinance later on down, want to get themselves in a better position, um, we encourage that. And typically they are repaid when the property is sold. And then that money comes back to the city and goes right back into the fund to go out to other uh, rehab projects. Uh, we have a new program that we piloted last year that was very successful. Um, it started with just a small amount of money, um, roughly 65,000. Um, we have that at 150,000 this year. And so we're looking forward to rolling that out. There's a huge demand, and as Sarah was talking about with the affordability issue, uh, we have a lot of existing housing and landlords, uh, although they are collecting rent, they have a cash flow issue. And it's very difficult if you're charging a low rent to a low income tenant to be able to do those large capital projects. And often we're seeing that those projects get deferred until it reaches a critical point. So this program was created. It was based on a lot of feedback from the community and from community partners during our consolidated planning process, both five years ago and then more recently when we just did our new plan. And that again is a 0% interest loan program. <clears throat> it's a little bit less money. It's 20,000 for the first unit and 5,000 for each additional. And we'll enroll properties up to eight units on that program. So we're not looking to do like the large multi uh, families that are, you know, managed by professionals. These are more your mom and pop property owners um, that, that we want to get. And Nashua has a lot of small or multifamily properties that are owned individually. That is for critical repairs. Um, so it's not a, you know, it's not a home like a renovation type program. It truly is. You know, if the heat has broken, if the electric's not up to code, the roof is leaking, we want to keep people housed in those units. And this loan program is geared toward that. And we ask that the owners do contribute some match. Uh, the other program that we have is also um, HUD funded. It's a competitive grant program that the city applies for. It's our lead paint and healthy homes program. And we're actually in the process of winding down our current grant. We're doing all our last few properties now, but we have resubmitted a new application for $5.7 million, which would be a very large volume um, lead program that we would like to have awarded. We should find out about that in the next few weeks. And we look forward to um, reinstating that. Hopefully our application will fare well. And we usually pair that with both of the other two programs listed on the left. So we really try to weave and braid the funding to leverage it and have it spread as far as it possibly can to address all the issues. So these are just a couple of infographics that we have. We use these to market the programs. Um, it's just really a recap on what I just talked about the homeowner housing program and the rental rehab program. Um, we'll be developing a new one for lead when that comes out. And then we have our um, home program, which the other three that I just talked about were CDBG, which is Community Development Block Grant. The home program we receive from HUD annually, it's an entitlement grant. And we have an annual allocation that comes through, that comes through this committee for distribution. And the typical things that we do, the home program is all about affordable housing. It's the only thing you do under that program. So we usually set aside um, a kind of a bucket of money that's available for general affordable housing development. And that can be to nonprofits or private developers. It can be a rental or homeowner. Uh, we can be doing new construction or rehab for affordable housing. It's the program also allows home buyer assistance which some people um, may be familiar with in other communities, down payment and closing costs, education, and that can be structured as grants or loans. The third one here, tenant-based rental assistance, uh, it's something that we talked about at this committee several months ago when we were developing the consolidated plan. And it's similar to, it's basically housing vouchers, but it is limited to a 24-month period. And it's 
really to, to target those um, gaps where maybe your public housing authority or your state vouchers aren't reaching and you can design that to target toward homeless or other special needs in your community. And then the last one is homeowner rehab. Um, I list it there. It's not something that a lot of people do with their home program. It's very difficult to institute because under this program and the way the regulations are structured, you have to address every code issue that exists in the home. And often we don't have enough money to do that. So um, to create a program where we would be uh, creating, uh, you know, an unrealistic end goal. Next slide. I think that might be the end. Oh, yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> so oh, no, that's that. <laughs> this is me. Yep. So what? So what are we doing? Right. We've pictured. We've we've talked about a, a picture that is um, shows a pretty imperative need for us to change how we think about and look at housing. Um, and so what are the next steps? Um, the city has is currently working um, with RKG Associates on a formal housing study. Um, that is supported by Economic Development Director Cummings, um, Carrie Skeena, and myself. Um, and so we are working with them and it should be finalized by the end of the month, early October at the latest, to really give us some great data to base changes on more than just we've talked about here. The scope of their study includes some of the things we talked about here, a wider spread of economic data, some stakeholder interviews from the community. Um, it has a rental housing market analysis, owner-occupied housing analysis, a gap analysis, where, these, where, where are there gaps and, and the barriers, why are people seeing barriers to getting into housing? One of the most important things, and I think the thing that we will talk about the most and focus on are strategies to improve our situation. And so those are coming in the final report, which is ex um, expected again in just the next couple weeks. This is a really exciting time for that as we are kicking off the master plan in just the next couple weeks and having all this housing data to underpin how we communicate about the master planning process and really talk about what is real and true on the ground versus sometimes what our perceptions will be really important in talking to the community and helping the community give us feedback up to the city about what our larger vision is and what's most important and how do we prioritize some of these strategies. So that's Carrie and I's contact information. Um, we are always available as needed. And then I'm just going to turn off my screen. And Thank you. To answer any questions? Alderman Wilshire. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, do what is the company again that you're working with on this study? RK, yep, RKG Associates, and they specialize in housing studies. Okay. All right. I, I didn't catch it the first time around. Thank you. No problem. Uh, Alderman Cleek. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm, I'm, pardon me. I'm kind of searching through my pages here. The um, when you were showing the the tracks, like 104, 105, and so on, those aren't just the downtown. 107 is the, the down the heart of the downtown where Main Street is. That correct? That's correct. So when you so when you're looking at 105 and 104, you're going up into French Hill and. 105 um, would be more of traditional French Hill. 104 would be more of the North End. 106 okay, so would be more of the Crown Hill neighborhood. Okay. Um, and I'm just trying to get perspective here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And 108 is actually um, goes from um, kind of the edge of the tree streets all the way down to the Whipple Street area to the highway. Um, okay. So when you were when you were talking about, um, I'm just going to take 107 for instance, um, and you were saying that there's a population of um, 1,507 people with housing units of 918. I'm reading this correctly, right? That is correct. Um, yes. And and you were talking, and and I think I had kind of lost my um, lost my brain here for a second. You were talking about the median income and so on. So when I look above that, and I'm looking at the the blue and red bar graphs. If I were to look again at um, 
107, if I'm reading this correctly, it's showing that um, the the blue would be the monthly rent and the uh, red would be the 30% of median monthly increments. So it's the it's not quite, I mean, it's not great, but it's not quite as bad as like to go to look at 106 where almost all of the median um, monthly rent is a 30% of median income. Am I reading that correctly? Um, it's actually, almost flip it. Um, so, okay. Um, so yeah, so um, for example, in 107, the, the average renter can afford $500 a month, but right. the average housing unit is 750. Okay. So they are, have a deficit of $250 a month that they are paying above and beyond 30% of their monthly income. Versus 106, it's actually very close to okay. the average rent to what people, um, their average, what 30% of their income might be. Okay, so I had I had it flipped then. Thank, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Um, that. That's really all my questions. I appreciate the clarification, it, it helps a lot. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Other questions from the committee? I have a few if everyone else is all set. Um, okay, so when, I can't remember the name of the agency, uh, comes to- RKG. RKG, not EKG, RKG, mm -hmm. that was close. Uh, when RKG um, does their presentation, will they be presenting to us? So it's kind of a two-way, can we get questions from them? Or are they going to give it to you and then you would be the facilitator? I believe that they will be involved as well. But um, I honestly have not focused on that part of the contract since we originally <laughs> looked at the scope. And I don't remember. But I will find out and clarify for you. But certainly, um, Mesquina, myself, and Director Cummings will be available to present the results to you, but I do believe that they'll be available for the presentation, um, for one presentation as well. I'm pretty sure that was included in the scope of their contract. I'll look while we're continuing to talk. See oh, if I, can I appreciate that. I just, I can imagine some really good questions, especially around the strategies. So, um, mm -hmm. you answer that question. So my second question, and maybe you don't know the answer, but my second question was, do you think that they will include some of the like more recent housing strains? Because we've talked about this a lot, but I'm concerned about what COVID has done to our housing market. I know a number of friends who are like, we're moving out of the city because we don't want to be in the city anymore. So I'm really interested in how that's impacting our housing um, you know, on a whole. So I think. The short answer is yes, but it won't be necessarily empirical data. It's going to be more from those stakeholder interviews. Um, yeah. That data is not available yet. It's it's happening as we speak, right? Um, and so it's a little bit premature to have some of that data, but I do believe with the stakeholders that they talk to in the community that they will get feedback about whether that is happening here or not and what kind of scale and scope they see to that. Perfect. I don't have any other questions. I'm looking forward to seeing the report and, and the strategies. And I really appreciate you both coming and, and prepping us for that. Yes. Okay. I'm looking to make sure nobody else in the committee has any questions. I think we can move on to communication. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. There are none. Unfinished business. There is none. New business resolutions. Resolution 20 relative to the acceptance and appropriation of $37,903 from the United States Department of Justice into police activity, into police grant activity, 2019 Justice Assistance Grant Multi Jurisdictional. I'll make a motion to recommend final passage of Resolution 2062. Am I unmuted? Uh, the resolution, the motion is for final passage. Is there anyone here to speak to this? That's me. Oh, great. <laughs> Again, Hollywood Squares. I'm like, who? Uh, Bill, Bill Adamson, Nashua Police Department. Um, so this is uh, through the um, Burn Justice Assistance Grant. This will be 
a three-year grant. It actually expires in 2022. Um, the funds are used for um, community-based um, events. Um, our Citizens Academy, which actually is going on now, it funds that. It funds um, officers being able to be present at um, citywide block parties, other um, community events, touch a truck, stuff like that. Um, also, it supplements our um, training budget. Um, when the training budget money runs out um, prior to the end of the fiscal year or the start of the new fiscal year, we're able to have some extra money to send officers to uh, much needed training. Um, and it is a, like I said, a federal pass through, and there is no match on this one. Question. I actually have a question. So I know grants are very specific sometimes on how they can use it. If we're not having, you had mentioned a lot of community events, we're not currently having them. Will you just have to use it for training or are there other ways you can use it? Yes, that's a very good question. Um, we actually have um, in in all the different um, gamuts of this grant, we have equipment and conferences. So usually a lot of times if we can't use um, the money for obviously community events, um, we'll usually move it over um, near the end of the grant towards uh, needed equipment or again, the, tr the training aspect. So it doesn't go unspent. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, the motion is for final passage. Any further discussion? I, I just have a question or make notice of something. I saw where, um, I think it stated, had something to do with the overtime. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. The um, this is not for the overtime, or is it for the overtime? It, it is for overtime associated with um, you know, officers going to those community events. Um, so if we have um, you know, specialty units, or um, in addition to on duty officers, um, it goes to those officers going um, to the block parties. Um, it goes towards um, crime watch meetings um, for myself to attend those because it's not budgeted um, overtime for those meetings. Um, so that is where the overtime comes. And then our presenters for the Citizens Academy, um, not all of the presenters are on overtime, um, but some of them do come in off duty. Okay, but I think in the fiscal note, it said it's not for like the pension and that type of thing, right? Oh, correct. Yes. Uh, no fringe benefits are in this. We, right, so it's we absorb that in the budget. Strictly the hourly. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Can the clerk please call the roll? Alderwoman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. And Alderman Wilshire votes yes. We have five yeas, zero nays. And that motion passes. Resolution 2063 relative to the acceptance and appropriation of the sum of $37,500 from the State of New Hampshire Department of Safety State Homeland Security Grant Program into Police Activity 2019 Homeland Security Grant Program. I make a motion for recommend final passage of resolution 2063. Thank you. Motion is for final passage. Mr. Adamson, are you here for this one as well? Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, so this one is um, through Homeland Security, um, the Department of Safety. Um, money was left over in there their funds um, under their 2019 program. And it was allocated to all the um, tactical teams in New Hampshire, all the members of the New Hampshire Tactical Officers Association. So Nashua PD SWAT team was given um, that amount, $37,500, and it's going towards um, night vision um, technology. The night vision technology that we have now is almost 20 years old. Um, so we needed to upgrade that. Um, and we obviously this was great because it doesn't come at a cost to the city, it's through the grant. Um, and also the majority of our um, special operations uh, via the SWAT team, they take place 
usually between the three to 11 shift. So depending on what time of year it is, if it's four o'clock in the afternoon and officers are out there, it's pitch dark. So um, it's much needed technology. Um, and the, the time is now for the upgrade because the um, monoculars that they're using now are, like I said, almost 20 years old. And that's a, a federal pass through as well. There's no match required. Thank you. Are there any questions from the committee? I don't see anyone, so please call the roll. Alderman Wilshire, you're on mute, I think. Sorry. Sorry. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Harry Gathright. Yes. Alderman Clay. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. And Alderman Wilshire votes yes. Five, we have five yeas, zero nays. And that motion passes. Thank us, you very much. Oh. Thank you. Before us is resolution 2068 relative to the use of Depart US Department of Housing and Urban Development Home Investment Partnership Program funds for acquisition and rehabilitation of 82 to 92 Amherst Street. I'll make a motion to recommend final passage of resolution 2068. Resolution is for final passage. Um, discussion on that motion. Ms. Skeena, are you here to talk about that? Is the um, potential developer trying to come, is he, is he here as well? Yes, hello. Oh, okay, hi, Kyle. Hi. Yes, this is, um, so we talked a little bit about the home program in the presentation that Sarah and I just gave. And this is one of those projects that comes before the committee for funding. Um, I will let the developer talk a little bit about the project as a whole, and then I'm happy to answer any technical questions related to the home program and um, anything to do with uh, the underwriting on that side. Well, thank you to Director Marchand and to Carrie for answering a thousand questions for me already relating to the home program. Um, I'm very excited about this property. Um, I actually worked on a fairly similar property behind the Shaw's Plaza on Main Street last year. Um, we built five brand new units and rehabbed 10 additional units at 49 Harbor Avenue. And by we, I mean my wife and myself um, took on this project. Um, I've got a I'm sorry, Kyle, can I interrupt you for just a moment? Can you just yeah. state your name and address for the, for the record? Sorry. Kyle Nobody Worth. knows who you are. <laughs> And my address 443 South Babusik Lake Road in Merrimack, New Hampshire. Thank you. Keep well, going. I'm going to sh screen share real quick, um, just showing a picture of the other project that we recently completed. And you can see um, Harbor Ave was a very similar project to what we're looking at at 82 and 92 Amherst Street. Um, we purchased the building with bullet holes through windows, vandalism all over the outside. And there were multiple squatters living on the first floor. And after about a nine month renovation, we completely redid up and down stairs, um, everything from new utilities coming in and out of the building, siding, windows, really remodeled the entire place. Um, here's an interior before picture and the same space after. Um, I just share that to show um, prior to applying for home funds, um, I already got the passion for affordable housing in Nashua. And I also work with seniors, many of whom have been forced out of their current living scenarios because of the increases in housing cost. Um, so really I'm all about trying to increase the amount of very low income housing that's available. Um, so that brings me to the 82 through 92 Amherst Street. This property is currently for sale, and on the listing, it specifically states, because of its proximity to downtown, Amherst Coach Apartments are a prime opportunity for significant rent increases if all units are renovated. Um, so essentially, it's a building that's moderately affordable now, 
and it's been marketed to a lot of developers to jack the rents up and make them luxury apartments. And the reason I'm here tonight is if I can utilize some home funds, I would like to do a mid-scale renovation and keep all of the units, um, seven of them specifically home restricted, and then keep the remaining 15 still very close to home levels for rent. Yes. I can't picture or visualize where this project is. It's right across from Holman Stadium. Street. I'm sorry? It's right across from Holman Stadium. They're long two to three story townhouse style units. Oh. Oh, yeah, yep. yeah. Is it a butt like <laughs> I, was, I was on me before. Cumberland <laughs> Farms? Does it yes, go? exactly. OK, I'm familiar with the property. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And inside does need uh, mostly cosmetic things, um, but it needs a significant amount of work. Um, its last update was in 1975. So there's lots and lots of deferred maintenance. And I'm a strong believer that just because they're affordable units doesn't mean they have to be substandard. I prefer that they were actually updated safe and clean units for people. Alderman Clay. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairwoman. Um, when you, um, uh, Mr. Worth, when you when you reference it, you say that seven would be um, home price and the and fifty would be close to home price. For those that are listening, could you kind of explain what you mean by that? Exactly. So for studios, the home rental units we would have those around eight hundred and eighty-five a month for a renovated space. Um, the non-subsidized we would have at nine fifty. One bedrooms we have listed at 1025 for the home units and 1150 for non home units. And two bedrooms were 1225 for home units, 1295 for the non home units. Um, so, compared to the charts that Director Marchand showed at the beginning, especially for Tract 4, um, they were significantly lower than other rents in the neighborhood. Alderman Clay. Thank, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Just just a quick follow up, more of a comment. Um, I, I that that area is Ward Two, which is it really abuts Ward Three. So I I'm very familiar with that that area, um, and and I'll tell you, a lot of the people that live within that area, um, you know, you often saw flowers hanging down. So they care to they really care about where they live, um, and um, so. I guess my next question would be, when you're doing this renovation, there's, they are currently occupied, are they not? There's three vacant units that we would renovate immediately. Okay. And um, the intentions would not be to displace anyone who currently lives there. Okay, that, that I, I appreciate that. Um, and as I, as I was saying that, I mean, I see people that they hang their, their flowers down there and they, and they seem to really love where they, they, they have that like kind of long porch type thing and, and so on. So. Um, I appreciate what, you, what you're doing here. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes, Alderman Karen. Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for nine months. I watched the renovation being done on uh, Marshall, uh, on Harbor Ave, and I thought you did a fabulous job. And if you can do as well on Amherst Street as you've done there, um, I think this is well worth the time and effort that you've put in. And I want to thank you personally, since that's my ward. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Are there other committee members who have questions for Mr. Worth? Alderman Wilshire. It's not actually for Mr. Worth, it's for Kerry Skeena. So of the 294,000 of home funds, will that leave us a balance of home funds, or is that using up what spent was already allocated or already, you know? <laughs> right. I, I think I do know what you're asking. So we currently have um, just about 771,000 in home funds available. So this is using a portion of that. Um, there are a couple of other home applications, one that has been submitted. Um, but it's not quite ready 
for underwriting just yet. That's the Bronstein apartment redevelopment. And then um, we have some other potential ones with NeighborWork. And NeighborWorks typically comes in and acts as our, uh, call it a CHODO, Community Housing Development Organization. And they have a separate set aside under the home funds to, to do work for that program. Um, so this is using a portion, it will still leave a balance. And, um, you know, noting that we have those other projects in the pipeline, we wanted to ensure that um, we had enough home funds to assist all of the good projects that are coming in. Well, this is a good program. Thank you, Mr. Worth. And thank you, Carrie. Is it everything, Ms. Alderman Walshar? Oh, Carrie, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I just, um, for the record, I, I wanted, um, Mr. Worth to just speak a little bit about the total project cost, including purchase price, because I think it's important to note that the home funds going into this are, um, you know, about seven or eight percent of the total cost, and the balance will be um, through private sources that Mr. Worth brings to the table. Sure. So my intention is I would be putting in um, about ten and a half percent of my own funds. Um, the home funds would be close to 11%, and the remaining roughly 80% would be financed through St. Mary's Bank. Um, in total, um, including about 250,000 of rehabilitation funds, it's 2.65 million would be the total project cost, and that's for 22 apartments. The committee is all set. I have a, a list of questions, but I want to make sure there's no more out there. I'm seeing heads. Okay. So I have a few questions. First, I want to thank you as well. This is, you know, great work, and you seem to have a very um, uh, nice approach to how you do this. And I thought the, the apartments that you did um, down on Arbor of yes. uh, looked beautiful. So thank you, thank you for taking on that project. And for working so diligently to keep them at an affordable price, obviously we know we can, we have a very, very high need for affordable housing in Nashua. So I appreciate that. Um, Thank you. Couple of questions. Um, I wanted to know if your previous building is fully rented now. I'm assuming the answer is yes. We we have kept rents at seven fifty to nine fifty a month. And we get roughly 90 to 100 applicants in a three to four day period. So it actually was full way before we were done. Wow, that's crazy. So we could easily uh, charge 200 a month more and rent it out, but that wasn't really the intention initially, so. No, I appreciate that. Um, the other question I had was that you talked about um, not wanting to displace, that's important too, right? So. You don't don't have the full answer, but I'm interested in how that works. Like, are you working with them there? Are you going to ship them into the vacant units while you work on theirs? Like, how do you how are you, how do you do such a big project with people still living there? Harbor Ave was very tricky. Um, that one was with everyone living there as well. Um, we've yet to find someone who's not taken a brand new, fully updated apartment for the same cost as their their old 1975 apartment. So the intention would be to complete three of them, all the common areas, and then offer those units to anyone who would qualify income-based wise um, within the building itself. Um, so it would give them the opportunity of that first, but um, me and Carrie do need to go over um, ensuring that we're meeting all of HUD's requirements when we are transitioning tenants. Great, thank you. That answers my question. I kind of figured it was something like that, but I just was interested how that worked. Um, I don't have any other questions. I appreciate you as well. Um, I said that before, but I really appreciate this project and thank you for bringing it forward. Okay, I think we can call the roll if you're ready, Alderman Wilshire. Okay, Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Wilshire votes yes. It's five yeas, zero nays. That Thank motion passes. Much, Thank you. 
Next, we have resolution 20-70 relative to the acceptance and appropriation of $294,676 from the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation into public health and community services grant activity, community health worker support to vulnerable populations. I'll make a motion to recommend final passage of resolution 20-70. The motion on the floor is final passage. Director Bagley, are you here to speak on this? Yes, I am, Madam Chair, thank you. This is a uh, funds that's being granted to the Division of Public Health and Community Services to bring on additional support for the activities that we are doing with COVID related work, as well as to support other public health activities that we're doing in the community, which include um, our asthma, led HIV, STD, uh, and immunization work. The Charitable Foundation actually responded to the report that was written by the, um, the governor's um, COVID response team, which I was a part of with four other individuals. Um, we put together a report that went out for recommendations to be implemented across the state to enhance some of the activities that need to be done to reduce the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on communities of color. And in response to that report that was, that was released, the Chattel Foundation called the division and asked us what we needed. And I readily provided the information of the use of um, that particular workforce to help enhance some of what we're doing. Uh, these individuals uh, will be hired on to work not only with us at the health department, but also to help us partner with some of our partnering agencies that help individuals we're talking about the housing piece uh, because we're looking at social determinants of health, addressing that as one of the issues with maintaining and sustaining their um, ability to stay housed. Um, community health workers bring a value um, you know, to the work that we do because they connect with the community, come from the community and can speak to uh, community members as uh, liaisons with the, the um, agencies that they will be working with. So really excited about this opportunity. It is a two year um, grant proposal that pays for their salary as well as all of um, their, their benefits and all of the supplies that they'll need for the work that they'll do in that two year period. It is only for two years. There's no additional funding that's required from the city to support um, this work at all. Not sure if anyone has any questions. Other questions from the committee? I have a question, Director Bagley. So is this the first time we've ever had this money come in and have these um, community health liaisons as you were talking about, or have we done this before? So this will be the first time that we're getting this amount of uh, support from the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation. They've helped us with other grants, but this is very specific to full-time employment for two, two community health workers. We currently have two community health workers and the department um, community health department at the division has always had community health workers uh, for as long as I've worked in, in public health, so for over 20 some odd years. Um, and each of those um, community health workers have been very specific to different programs. Uh, the city hired one of our community health workers full time to go across all of our programs and even work across different departments. But this is the first time that we received this amount of funding from the Charitable Foundation for this type of work. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any other discussion points, so I think we can call the vote, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Clay. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Wilshire votes yes. We have five yeas and zero nays. And that motion passes. Thank you. Next, Thank you, Director Bagley. Next, we have resolution 20-72 relative to the acceptance and appropriation of $356,046 from the United States Department of Transportation, Federal Transit Administration, and $26,828 from the State of New Hampshire Department of Transportation into transit grant activity, low or no emission grant. I will make a motion for final passage of resolutions 20-72. 
Um, the motion is for final passage. Is there a discussion on that motion? Director Marchand, are you the lead on this? Hey, yes, Mark. hi, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, this was a, a nationally competitive federal grant that um, Camille and her team um, worked on and pulled off, I must say, in the middle of the COVID disaster in May. So massive kudos to her and her team for pulling this off. Um, and so we have been awarded a NOLO grant um, in the amounts you recited. <laughs> and it will go towards buying um, two electric hybrid um, vans and also to adding um, electric charging stations over at the transit center. Um, and so it is a great opportunity for transit and um, the matching funds are provided in the escrow process. Great, thank you. Um, Alderman Klee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just have a really quick question. Um, when we purchase these via the grant, will we be retiring any, or are these gonna be in addition to what we currently have? No, that's a great question. Um, these are planned replacements of um, via, of very old Arbok vans that we have. Um, we had started, I don't know if you remember, uh, about a year and a half ago, we entered into contract with Champion to, re to um, replace a chunk of our vans um, because they are all over 14 years. They're past their useful life. And so that was a grant that we got at that time. Um, but um, now we are um, now we've gotten this grant to replace a couple more, and we're trying to really diversify um, and not just be diesel or gas based at this time. So this was a great opportunity through the no or low no or low emissions national competitive grant to do so. One more follow up question, Madam Chair. Of course. Thank you very much. Um, the the other question I have is: Do you know offhand um, how many vans that we have in our inventory at the moment? That we use. That's a great question. I believe, let's see if I, my cheat sheet is right here. Um, I think we have <laughs> um, a total of 20, I believe we have 21 or 22 vehicles at the moment. That would be the combination of the fixed route, fixed route fleet, sorry, little tongue tied, the pair and the paratransit vans. It also includes um, the, the two just regular vehicles that we use for um, di many different types of things. So, yes. Well, thank you very much. And I, I definitely am very in favor of this. So thank you. And we will sell the vans that um, we are retiring. Um, and those proceeds go back into buying new vans. They don't make much, they've got a lot of miles, <laughs> but every bit helps. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there additional questions from the committee? I just have a comment. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. You said Camille. Thank Camille you Patterson, to your team. the transportation yeah. manager, yes. Just thank you for going above and beyond and getting this done. I know we're, as an energy environment committee member, I know that we're trying to get closer and closer to zero emissions as a city, and this is one small part of it. So I really appreciate that. And I'm obviously very in favor of this. Okay, if nobody else has any questions, then we can call the vote. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Wilshire votes yes. There are five, five yeas and zero nays. And that motion passes. New business ordinances. We have none. Tables and committee. None. General discussion. None, it looks like. Is there any public comment? I don't see anyone from the public. Double checking quickly. Okay. Okay. Remarks by Alderman. Quiet group today. Oh, Alderman Wilshire. Thank you. I, I want to thank uh, 
Director Marshawn and Carrie Skeena for um, working on the housing study. I think it's really important right now. And, and we all know that rents are so high in this city and that our vacancies are, we have no vacancies. I mean, so I, I appreciate the work they're doing and, and that they wanna set some goals and um, interested in, in how this all turns out because we certainly need low income housing. Thank you. Alderman Cleef. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I wanna echo what um, President Wilshire um, had said. and. And that is true. This, I think this study is going to um, give us some really good information. And I'd like to uh, thank uh, uh, Mr. Worth for what he's done with the city to help um, create some um, affordable housing. The fact that we have such a, um, a low vacancy rate really is going to push all of those costs up because it's supply and demand. And, and that's kind of how our economy works but we're gonna to get to the point where we're gonna push ourselves out of the market altogether. So I, I think this gives us an even balance and, and I appreciate all that he is doing uh, for that. And um, Director Marchand and her team are just incredible. Carrie Skeena, um, I, I can't thank any of them enough. This is really a priority for our city, so thank you. Thank you, Alderman Clay. Is there anyone else who would like to provide remarks? And I'm going to um, also throw in my comments. Uh, along with the previous ones, affordable housing is a critical issue for us here in uh, Nashua and you know the state at large, but especially here uh, with our vacancy rates. And I know I've had multiple conversations with Director Marchant and and um, Claire Skeena around you know what are we doing? How can we help them? Really looking forward to that study. Um, as a jumping off point to see how we can continue to promote affordable housing, uh, find more Kyle Worth in our city who are will willing to uh, put that for and you know at the forefront, um, and not just develop at you know extremely high rates, which we need both. But affordable housing is is really hard to find. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing that, and I appreciate both of you for coming and and getting us a little bit primed. Um, and ready for that report. Um, I think we have a uh, possible non-public. Huh? None. <laughs> um, and do we have a motion? To adjourn. <laughs> uh, the motion is to adjourn by roll call. Can the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Karen. Yes. Alderman Wilshire votes yes. We have five yeas and zero nays. Thank you. And the meeting is adjourned at 8.05. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.